are you? Oh, I'm okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm sorry to be kind of cryptic about my emergency, but okay. basically my um, son showed up in DC as kind of planned. And um, he, I don't know if I mentioned that he, he called me or I called him and he picked up the phone and said, oh, I'm in Nashville. And I was like, no. what? No, you didn't say that. <laughs> and then he was like, and I'm in a, we're on our way to a trade show in Mobile, Alabama. And then I was what? like, what? For So for their like organic seed business that they run, they were going, seven of them were in a van driving across country, um, going to a trade show to produce, you know, to promote their product. Um, and so he said, we're actually gonna come back to DC and spend a couple of days just to make sure we don't have COVID before we go back to the commune. So it's like a work assignment, right? So they go, he has a great time. He finds out that he loves talking to organic farmers and other, or, you know, whatever. Like, he, yes. and he came back and in DC, they were still doing like the follow on calls and stuff. And he was pretty psyched. Um, I guess they got back to DC Saturday, maybe. And then on Tuesday, he wasn't feeling well and he got COVID. So the whole they, van full of them? Well, so the whole van full of them. Um, I mean, and otherwise he would have been staying at my house if it hadn't been a whole van full of them. So they're mm -hmm. staying, I guess, you know, the hippies have connections wherever you go, I guess. So they're staying in some like group home. <laughs> you know in dupont circle um, wow and so he was the first to feel sick and got a rapid test and was positive so they like locked him in a bedroom and he's the only one who's gotten sick so far everybody else has been fine and one reason i've been kind of like trying to figure out my schedule is that the the library in DC will let you get four free rapid tests and two free PCR kits every day what? with your ID. Holy shit, every day? Every day, yeah. So I've been like, but the library is open till like six, right? So I have to like bust my tail down there at five to get the COVID tests and then take them over to him, which is actually worth it. Like, I mean, cause yeah. there's seven of them that are trying to test every day, right? Yeah. So rather than buying them, um... <laughs> yeah. The, the, honestly, I'm. Like, so I've right been now, like I this, like it, COVID test before. mule for this group. <laughs> I know, but you're just like doing the ultimate mom thing. You're like getting COVID tests for all the hippies to make sure they're all safe, and you're delivering. Yes, mom. Those other mothers need to know how. How fantastic. And so, you, you know, and then of course I've been taking like orange juice and, you know, oh. all that stuff over there. But, um, <laughs> but I had other thing. Well, one, the library closes at six. So you have, I have to get there before six to get my yeah. free tests. Um, but then I also had other evening commitments for some of the volunteer work I do and stuff like that. So. Anyway, I just didn't like suddenly my my one hour between five and six was full. Yeah. But today no, I, I came into my office because the DC absolutely. Department of Health is downstairs so I can get them. Um, More tests. Yeah. <laughs> but they only have the PCRs. They don't have the rapid tests here. I can't so. even imagine how that house full of hippies is. They're just like, this is the jackpot. <laughs> People well, I think, I mean, everybody has figured out this free scheme. So they actually do check your driver's license, um, you know, when you go to pick them up, but you could, yeah. I mean, if you really need them, you could just drive around and get as many as you need, I guess. Um, awesome. I really wish that was the case out here. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I just... I don't know. I was kind of thinking like I go in there every day, like show my thing, get four free tests and walk away. In Portland, we would have to like wait in line for half an hour. And then yeah. not only that, but they were making you like after you took your little rapid test, they made you stand in line again to record the the oh. the result, which was like for a I rapid test. Like this is not a good user experience. <laughs> 
yeah. it wasn't a good user experience. And I was like, and plus like, who's collecting that data? Like, why would you, I mean, I get it for a PCR test, why you'd want to contract contact yeah. trace, but I don't know, for a rapid test. I. Anyway, the, uh, it was a weird thing in Portland. It was probably like a third party vendor that had the contract to do it or something. And, you know, that's what I was guessing when I was, yeah. But leave it up to America to find a way to wedge a third person in there and make some yeah. money off it. Yeah. yeah, so now I'm actually not sure what advice to give him in terms of stopping his quarantine. Um, I mean, I think technically he should probably have a negative PCR test before he is contact with somebody. But I mean, that can take a while. Huh. How long? So the CDC said five days or did they change that? <laughs> they did five days like you can five days from the day. It used to be 10 days from the day you tested positive. Mm -hmm. Now they're saying five days. I don't know. I mean, I guess I guess the CDC is credible. I don't know. We hope. Yeah. Anyway, we hope so he tested credible. positive on Tuesday. Wow. So he's got at least until. But Monday. he was symptomatic. He was symptomatic already on Tuesday. So. Okay. How did that show up? Um, sore throat. Man, I would not be surprised if I had this without ever mm -hmm. getting diagnosed. Sore throat, and then he. So I went over on Tuesday and got his sample to do a PCR and he got it back negative this morning. So weird. I know, yeah. right? That is weird. So weird. Yeah, but no, so far, nobody else has tested positive. So I was like, the worst part is going to be if one of the other hippies like test positive on like Friday, and then they're all on lockdown for another. <laughs> wow. <laughs> How many people are in that house besides the guys that came back? I don't know. There's seven oh. of them. So I don't know how many more there are of anybody oh, else. So I was like, do they have enough space? I was like, well, maybe it's good that he's like, yeah, you know, he's sleeping a lot, of course, like you do when you're sick. But he was like, I was like, you have a room to yourself. And he's like, I guess so until somebody else gets test positive. Then they <laughs> throw that throw in there too. <laughs> Over <laughs> jail, then don't you, it just keeps going and going. You can't put those people together. <laughs> then you'll get sick again. That's you. Oh, it's so oh. funny. Oh, and Lord. his his guy, kind of his best friend from the commune didn't actually go on the trip with them, but was like, "Hey, yeah, I'll go to D.C. Like, swing the van by and pick." pick her up on the way back from Alabama to DC. So they did that. And she's like an absolute hypochondriac. But she <laughs> she and, and Z like spent the first 48 hours like, you know, in bed together watching movies. And then Z gets COVID and she's just like having oh yeah, she's so anxious. Freaking out. That's oh, funny. she's completely fleek. I mean, I put out a call for Xanax for her. Yeah. Like I was like, does anybody I know have <laughs> Xanax? I do. Do you want me to? <laughs> I know. Well, funnily enough, sadly, I seem to be past the age or networks of people <laughs> who have Xanax in their. No, drawer. listen. I've got a whole stash. A uh, good friend uh, like sorted me out before I went off to Germany last year. She was like, she came to my house what? with like. The, the good drugs like she had all the good drugs I'm like Ashley what are you doing she's like I, I, I want you to have these and then she had like a whole bunch of like super specialized um, you know CBD stuff and whatnot she just gave me like a little pharmaceutical care package she goes that's awesome when things get too much just take even if you're not a habitual user just take a quarter of these tablets so I have I have that leftover stash I mean if you're in dire need law I can absolutely well, I think by the time she's either going to conk herself out or get COVID, I don't know. But <laughs> I was like, oh, I have these, um, you know, the gummies that we got the last time. Mm -hmm. Dana, I got some pomegranate ones, which are like the chill yeah. out CBD ones. So I was like, oh, I've got these really great gummies. She's like, gummies are not going to do it in this <laughs> situation. <laughs> well, just eat the whole thing. I think eat the entire bottle might be more like right. it with their their <laughs> levels of regular consumption. Um, yeah, I, I can understand that. Bless her heart. 
Anyways, that's what's going on in our life, in addition to it being like 16 degrees every day here. But it's you really know, cold. it's in the 30s or low 40s now, but sunny. I'm I'm yeah, at least in it's sunny here. In the office yeah, of a lawyer here. friend of mine, but it's gorgeous and sunny. We just went for this long walk along the waterfront and had lunch at the Poke Bowl, oh, and now I'm oh nice, at the office for an jealous, hour. jealous. I'm jealous. <laughs> it's kind of nice to be in an office. I'm like, hmm. She's yeah, like I'm at the office into today. Their leads for another two years, and she's like, "Do you want a desk? I'm renting out desks. Let's make this a co-working space." I'm like, hmm, that's actually interesting. Mm-hmm. That's a good idea. It's a not. It's not a bad idea because as it gets yeah. nicer again, uh, I mean, one of the things I missed about having an office is biking into the office and getting mm-hmm. exercise yeah. that way. Exactly, right. exercise is part of your commute, or yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Is um is the space you're in is that a new space or where you've been working all along, right now? Mine well, or Astrid's? A, Astrid's. So this is my friend's law firm, and they have this massive, like the better part of a floor, in this building that's like in in the northwest in the Pearl District, right by the Broadside uh, Broadway <laughs> Broadside for the Broadway Bridge. Yeah, and, you're in my um, neighborhood. Yeah, it's on Marshall and Eighth. You you yeah. it's a zebra it's a zebra design building, but the. Oh, the cool. back, Side of that is has a bunch of floors of office space and they've got a the better it's like 20,000 square feet it's this huge space or 10,000 square feet at least anyway um and so no I've never been here as a as a tenant I, I it just occurred to me that her you know her her pr- firm is going through some changes and she has all this space for rent I'm like hmm, and is it open <laughs> space or they actually have little you're in rooms or so I'm I'm in a little I'm in a little private office but I mean I don't know if you can see it but it's oh that's nice it's mm-hmm. like it's really nice light and mm-hmm. just sort of this yeah. plan situation it's yeah now really I have bad. to show mine well, you can see I yeah. sit right in front of the windows, but yeah, oh, wait, you can't see down the hall. Yeah, I, you both I, know, got I guess you can't see it. But anyway, it's all windows down. Yeah. Yeah. I have to say that, you know, that having the studio has done a lot to save my mental health, you know, because mm-hmm. we've all been strained big time. And, and I think it's important to have a space where you can work outside of your home if you can. Yeah, I'm contemplating it seriously now. Um, mm-hmm. I may have, I, I'll have to run the numbers on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, how long are you going to, are you going to be going back in more often, Laurel? I'm coming in like once a week now. And I, I guess for me, it's more like I'm, I don't have a home office in my house. So I have a, a table in my bedroom. That's the space that I use. And I, I still have not gotten a big, nice office chair. I'm just like sitting on a hard chair. Mm-hmm. Like it's miserable. And yeah. it, there's no separation between like your work and your personal space. And so I like, you know, I've got a nice big desk here and a big monitor and a comfy chair and all that stuff. But it is, I, you know, I don't like not, I, it's a half an hour commute for me. So right. sometimes I walk, it's about a four mile walk. Mm, um, nice. Oh, that's nice. So I can do that <laughs> and walk, then take. Yeah. Take the walk bus down back. the hill and then I take the bus or the subway home yeah yeah but I do have to then I have to get out the door by like 6 15 mm. in order to really get here and settle in for my day starts at eight every day usually so mm-hmm. yeah 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 yeah, yeah. but um Gosh, I feel like I had something else to tell you guys, but now I've forgotten what it is. <laughs> oh, is that what they gave me? So, um, so my friend is also um, my lawyer for one or several of the companies I'm associated with. But check this out. Check out this beautiful hyacinth. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. But that smells yeah, lovely. The paralegal just came in. She's like, yeah, got you your little New Year's gift. Like, oh, That's a nice little workstation, too. I yeah. Know. <laughs> is that a standing desk, Astrid? Yeah, it's a standing desk. I'm sitting at it because the standing part is not configured for somebody mm. my height. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I saw, I mean, it used to be kind of a big thing to ask for a standing desk around here. And I see there's so many like people who had them. I was wondering if I can move them to our space. But then I remembered, I think they outlawed standing desks because of COVID. Because like what? if you stand up over your particle, your particle, oh, your cubicle, yeah. 
right? Because yeah. we're all open space, right? So if I was standing up, like mm -hmm. my sneezes would be going. Technically, I'm in violation of office policy right now. I should be wearing my mask at all times. <laughs> There's one other person here on the floor. Today. That was my next question. How many people are there? Are you by yourself, Astrid? Right. Or just one other, one or two other people? Well, there, I think in this office, I see four other people, but again, that's like a 10,000 ish square foot yeah. office. So I'm not concerned. I have no idea how many square feet this is, but I think our office seats 250 cubicles. Ooh, wow, that's big. Yeah, it's two floors. Mm, wow. Two floors. Yeah, that's a different, yeah. different kind of situation. Mm. Um, I wanted to, can we go back to Z really quick? Yeah. I wanted to say something about um, his organic farmer experience. Uh-huh. How do you, uh, do you think that's going to change his trajectory? Like, I mean, we know that he's really into that, but did that, yeah. did that. It's going to be, I mean, I was actually on the phone with Warren Wilson today, the school that I hope he goes to next fall. And we, you know, we scheduled the call today because he finally has internet and could get on a call at a time that the admission office is open. And then he skipped the call because he slept through it. <laughs> it's COVID. But I got to speak to a very nice admissions counselor. And she was asking, she was saying, oh, I see that he's interested in like sustainable farming or something. And I kind of laughed. And he, she was like, oh, is that a new interest? I was like, yeah, kind of. Like he grew up in one of the world's biggest cities <laughs> and now he's like living on this organic farm. So I don't know. I think he, I mean, I think he's, yeah, he's 19, right? So he has some kind, when we were up in the Berkshires, he was definitely like eyeing the land around and being like, oh, I could, you know, completely imagine you know, buying some acres of land and living on a multifamily plot and, you know, like he, that's in his head right now. <laughs> so that's not a bad idea. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. 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 Wow. I mean, he's getting skills. I mean, it's interesting. Like he, he, he's, I don't know if you heard Astrid, he went on the sales trip to, to a trade show in Mobile, Alabama. Oh my God. For um, organic Man. farmers to market their seeds that they harvest. I thought they were mostly wildflower seeds, but I might be, that might just be the part of the business that I saw. So them and the neighboring commune plant and harvest these seeds and package them. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I've always known it's part of the business, um, mm -hmm. but I guess, I guess their sales, yeah, their sales have gone up during COVID as I mm -hmm. think as, all gardening stuff has gone up during yeah. COVID, right? Um, but the competition is, I don't know, whatever. They needed to kind of market themselves. They felt like they needed to go out and market themselves. Um, oh, so seven of them got in a van and drove across the country um, and not in the most direct route, I would say either. I was like, wait, you're in, he, they went from like Nashville to, <laughs> I was like, instead of like this, but they were like, no, that's where we had a place to stay. Um, so, wow. but he's really, he said, surprisingly, he's loved the sales stuff. Mm. Like he, he's he was like, I love talking about our product. I love meeting these people and talking it up. Um, so, you know, who, I, again, like he's 19, like who knows what he's going to find in life. Right. right. I just think it's exciting when he gets to college. I mean, that's another wide open space that, that you can yeah. explore. Yeah. 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 You know, it's funny. It's like the second story I've heard of a recent trade con conference, which strikes me as a phenomenally bad idea right now. Well, it's particularly like, in Alabama. Come in on. Alabama. Well, and <laughs> my, my friend's 23-year-old my friend's son just went to a trade convention in Fort Myers, Florida, uh -huh. Florida. for hops. It's like all these beer brewers. So he's like, yeah, we started drinking at 11. You know, and by 7 p.m., like some dude, some some trade association is trying to schlep everybody off to a strip club. And then was like, I'm out of here. Gross. Welcome to ugh. Florida. <laughs> yeah, like. Ugh. Yeah, it's yeah. gross. Or us. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Meanwhile, Florida's I, I don't know. It's 
it feels like the COVID epidemic is kind of moving across the country and, you know, and more or less, it's not ending here, right? But our numbers are way down on the East Coast, except for Florida. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's settled in the South. It likes it down there. It's warm and people are stupid. Uh, (laughs) Sorry, that's terrible. Uh, yeah it's true though right and there's no support for actual you know there's no support for behavior change down there yeah yeah not at all so mm. yeah no i i'm sorry that you got sick but i'm glad that he discovered i think something. it's like a bad case of the flu and then i i think really the bad part is that he's locked in this room by himself but. i know <laughs> But he's got his mom bringing tests and orange juice. <laughs> That's pretty yeah. cute. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, should we get going? Sure. Yeah.